I'm going to go over the four camera controllers that I have. To use these, the only thing that you're going to need is this advanced utilities folders. Everything else can be deleted. Uh -huh. To use it, the only thing you got to do is take this script, or to use any of them, uh, take the camera controller script and drag it onto an object. As you can see here, we have the basic camera controller right here. The uh, basic camera controller, it's a third person camera controller. Similar to something you see in like World of Warcraft. Uh, it can zoom in, zoom out, go around. Pretty much what you'd expect. Uh, as you see, like notice we're going, we're getting closer to the target. Uh, so it doesn't collide into things. All right. So I'm going to go over each of the features. Uh, getting locked in. I'm going to go over the different features that it has. So to start off, we have the initialization features right here. Uh, the initial rotation. So when we start up, we're at an angle because it's 30 degrees. I could change that and you'd be at a greater angle. Uh, then we have the zoom distance. This is uh, the maximum distance that we can zoom away from the character. So we can go to 50. You know, so it's up to like 30. And now we're at 50. Uh, okay. So, this is the actual distance that we're trying to be at. So, like, right now we're trying to be two units away from the character. Uh, if I set this to, like, ten, we're trying to be ten units away. Uh, I say try because, like, if I go here, I can't be ten units away. Otherwise, I'd be clipping through. I can actually clip through if I turn off the collision. So, first thing, target. Target's where it's looking at. Right now, it's looking at this... Uh, object right here, which is just stationed on my character. Uh, it's just something to look at. Rotation. Rotation is, uh, can be enabled or disabled, so now even if I try to rotate, no matter what, it's not going to rotate, it just won't do anything. Limits. So if you see here, I can't go above this 90 degree limit. By turning this off, I can actually go all the way if I want to. Uh, I can also limit that down further, so if I put that to say 30, I now can't go above 30 degrees. Uh, horizontal, horizontal is the same thing. It uh, it limits it based off a certain perspective. So if you want to change the way the horizontal rotation, like where it's being locked, you're gonna have to do that in code. There's uh something that you can, there's like an object you can rotate, which will determine where those limits are. For the most part, I don't imagine you even need that, but it's there in case you wanted to like limit where you're able to look or you could always just wrap uh, how you deal with the rotation. These events, these are set up so that you can uh, encode, you can have something listen to this rotation every time it moves this amount of degrees. I don't have something set up to show you this, but every time it moves this degrees, it'll fire off an event if you have it enabled. Uh, this reset total after each event is so like if you were to do a 180 degree rotation instantaneously, uh, since it's set to 90, normally that should fire two events. If you have this set, it'll only fire one event because after the first, it'll reset itself. This is useful if, like, if you have like 0.1 and you do like a five rotation and you only wanted to do one uh, event. The next feature is zoom. Zoom is uh, this controls the way that this scrolling in and scrolling out happens. So the minimum distance. This is just an override. So like you have minimum here, you have minimum there. Uh, this is an override, so when you're using this, it'll always uh, be at minimum this. So if I set this to like 10, I can't go below 10. Snap in, snap out. This makes it so that rather than zooming in, it just snaps. You can do each one individually, so I can scroll in, but I can snap out. Uniform speed. This makes it so that the camera doesn't move at a, it doesn't move the way it did before. Now it'll move the speed in units per second. So it's moving 0.6 units per second. Whereas before, what it was doing is it was moving, uh, and that, that's, that's ignoring, uh, I think that, yeah, that's, that should be ignoring the, uh, the, the amount of input. It should always just move at that speed. The way it works now is if I do a big move out, it takes 0.6 seconds, because I have it set right here, to do the entire move. So if I do, if I go to 50, 0.6 seconds. So if I go to, the, if I go to like, uh, if I go to like 2, 0.6 seconds. Now, enable add percentage on scroll. 
is something to smooth this out. If I turn this off, you'll notice when I zoom out, it does like a snap, because uh, it's getting towards the end of the duration for its travel, and because you're still scrolling outwards and you're moving that target, it um, you end up getting like a very, you get a long distance that's covered in a very short time. What this does is it makes it so that every time you scroll, it adds a little time to the total trip time. This only works without uniform speed. Uh, and that causes it so that when you're scrolling outwards, uh, it'll uh, increase the time and it'll smooth out that snappiness. Uh, the amount of time you can add is here. So if I wanted to, every single time you scroll outwards, it's going to add 0.6 seconds to the duration of the trip to a maximum of the speed by the way it doesn't you, you can't spam scroll and go above 0.6 that's why uh yeah so view collision view collision is the thing that's uh moving us inwards you see you can see over here the red that's it uh that's it's those are raycasts being sent out let me actually turn off this so this is the default view collision uh Right now it's set to five points, which are these sampling points. You have your layers that you want to hit, line of sight. Right now the character is ignore raycast. Uh, ignore these objects, it's just something I threw in. If you wanted to ignore an object, you could. So like, let's say we have this object right here. Let's lock this down here. If I add this to here, go right through it. So that's just a little extra thing that you have to work with. Uh, the sampling points are where you want to sample. This helps you not clip into things when you get too close. Now right now you see we're actually, these points are kind of far away. So we could actually clip into this if we wanted to because we don't have these in a good position. What you really want to do is you want to have something like say that. You want to have it pretty much in the form of your character. Uh, at least for a basic setup. If you wanted to, you could have like 50 of these points. It's just a list. Thickness checking. Now, thickness checking is if, if you see right, let me see. Can get it? There you go. Right. So if I turn on thickness checking, you don't have that anymore. What it does is it's checking the thickness of the objects uh, and trying to determine is this thin enough to where I should just look through it. Uh, I'll go over here. And I'll show you a little bit more complicated. So you, now you notice these blue lines over here. This is uh, that's this this controls the number of times that things are going to be raycasted. So in order to maintain this, uh, if you know as I spin, you can see the different blue lines and different sets of red lines. Uh, the number of angles causes it to check in kind of like a circular rotation, the thickness of things, the uh, oh, number of angles, number of checks is the number of things. So if I set this down to one, or can I set it down to one? Uh, I guess I, I can only set it down to, uh, it always does a minimum of one. So uh, if I set this like, if I set this like up here, it'll perform a lot of ray checks to, yeah. So this just increases the fine, like how fine the amount of ray checks is. Really setting it to five is uh, more than good enough. Input, input allows you, is it just an object that uh, you can feed in code uh, an input object and this will process it. You can disable different inputs if you want. So even if you feed it an input, if you have it disabled, it won't count it. You can add sensitivities to it and you can invert input. Easy Unity input, this is something that I created just for this. Uh, I figured it makes it easier to work with and for a lot of people's cases, it's a starting point that they can start working with uh, and it gets them just going. It allows you, you're just gonna be able to drag this in and make it work. Uh, you have the different input names to the different functions. So you've got horizontal rotation, vertical rotation, scrolling in and scrolling out. You can individually disable these and uh, different different ways to uh, enable when it happens. So only, uh, you can actually set it so it only does the input when the mouse button's pressed, and you can even do it, only do it when the mouse button, the cursor is locked, uh, which over here we have a cursor component, which 
this is uh well I'm actually getting <laughs> so annoying uh, the cursor component can be enabled or disabled so that uh, to control whether it's doing it when you uh, lock it it sets it to this state so you can actually set it to confined I've never used confined so but uh, you can set it to that the name needed to input is fire one so right now my left button is the lock and this is enabling the lock cursor button so now I'm clicking but uh, it's nothing's happening now I turn it back on I click it something happens it's locking uh, the hold to release is alt right now I have that set the fire too so if I press alt even though I'm clicking down my mouse button which you can't see it releases the lock invisible when locked so I can actually set it so like now it's visible when it's locked uh, and invisible when unlocked so oh shit uh, <laughs> I didn't think this sir okay so now my uh, cursor is invisible and I can't see it and <laughs> finally we have um, this is a component made for head bobbing so if you notice when I went into zero it uh, it started shaking uh, it's probably not your intended desire that every time you go into zero range it uh, you head bob so I'm just gonna turn that off but uh, you can force activate it which is probably what you're gonna use almost every time I imagine if you have like a movement controller you're gonna use this force when you start moving so it's like oh I'm running and then I oh, I turn it off uh, enable activation range is you have to have it enabled to do that and what it'll do is if I say let's say 10 it'll stay doing that up until then and you notice I scroll out further enough and it uh, stops and this is the so let's force that so this is the curve so let's do that uh, so it's a little different uh, you have an animation curve that describes the duration of the curve so now you see it's going to take one second for the entire curve to happen I set this to like two the magnitude of the curve is much bigger now it's set to a two unit magnitude and adjust back to normal time is when I turn this off it takes that number of seconds to neutralize back to zero screen shake I can enable it and right now I have it set to horizontal and vertical I can do horizontal or I can do vertical and of course I can set the sensitivity uh, five is pretty extreme and then this is uh, so uh, let me let's see so this is the amount of time between uh, when the offsets randomize so every point with zero zero one seconds it'll create a new uh, offset with this screen shake component uh, the sensitivities being here now use specific seed uh, it's a little hard to show you I'm, I'm gonna see if I can show you this it's a little hard to show this but it's uh okay so let's see we're at a neutral up down up down okay now use specific seed will use the same seed when randomizing that so you get a consistency so I go up down up down and uh, so that'll maintain how your screen shaking happens like if which may be visually more appealing for you uh, and like I said if to use this it's just drag this basic camera controller over uh, and you can just go ahead using it now another thing most of the logic for all those little pieces you see are encapsulated in these classes uh, so most of the logic actually isn't here so you see here we have all the components uh, and the actual logic to make this whole thing work is just this blob of code right here which is just taking things from different uh, different components and feeding them into each other and so if you wanted to like make your own camera you'd be able to do that pretty easily uh, or if you were just looking to figure out how things worked it should be pretty easy to figure out where different things are happening or if something's going wrong if you needed to tweak something uh, like who knows maybe I, maybe I made a bug as great as I am uh, but you know those things happen so if you need to be able to fix it you could uh, but at the same time this also is uh, the way this is set up in the individual settings I think it's gonna be really nice for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience and wants to be able to just say I want this camera 
drag, set up the target, set up the camera I'm using, it works. All right, the next camera controller I'm going to show you is the holding position camera controller. This camera controller, it holds a position and it looks at a target, but it has some extra features built into it. Uh, the first thing you'll notice over here is these components are the same ones that you saw in the basic camera controller, and they do the exact same thing. They're the, uh, they have the same settings, and they'll have the same functionality. So if I start this up, I'm going to just start moving around, and you notice I'm always just looking at the target, but see I snap in, I move away, I start zooming out. That's because of uh, the view collision. So if I turn that off and I run over here, now this is basically just like a normal camera. Like you could script this up probably pretty quickly. Yeah. I imagine it would just be rotation, look at target, and you have over whatever. So the view collision is a big thing here uh, in terms of uh, functionality. But you also have the cursor functionality if you want. I threw that on there. Uh, I don't know what you'd use that for in this case, but it's there if you want it. Uh, if you don't, just whatever. Disable. Head bob. If you want it to, uh, you know, you can head bob on this holding position camera. Or screen shake, which is probably the more useful one. But, yeah, so you can even, uh, so it still does the same exact thing. And then right out. And that's all this does. It takes a target, it has a position. Uh, so this holding position is actually uh, another thing in space you have. So there are three things you need for this camera. It is a position for it to hold on to, the camera itself, and a target to look at. So I can actually, uh, what I can actually do this. Hold on, let me move him over here. If I move this, move this like that, uh, yeah. Now imagine you're setting up like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're using like spline and you're, uh, and let me, do I have a, yeah, I'm going to disable that mesh filter, uh, using like spline and you're moving where the camera is held, you can do some kind of cool cinematic type of stuff with that too. Uh, so yeah, that's the entire holding position camera. Now the locking camera, uh, locking target camera controller. This camera controller is a bit more complicated than the last one. So, uh, let's start with the target. Uh, so the locking camera controller is supposed to be kind of like the Z targeting and like Zelda or any form of like locking on. The way it works is it's looking from a target you're looking at to another target which you're locked onto. So I'm going to show the targets here are on my character. Uh, so here's my character. He has two targets on him. So the first thing about this is you can actually have it look at, you can actually have it have multiple targets on where your character is. And right now it's set up so that it'll always pick the, uh, it'll always use the one that's closest to the lock target. So if you notice right here, uh, I think I need to run over here or not over here. It's going to switch, switched, switched. That's because those two, those two, uh, those two targets I have, one of them ends up, the one on the right ends up being closer than the one on the left ends up being closer. And you notice it does that little lerp between them. Uh, and of course you have, uh, there's just different, there's just like little features to manipulate how that happens. Uh, but I can also do furthest, so you see that, or random, like, you can do random. But what I can also do is maintain target, so every time you, uh, enable or disable this camera controller, it'll uh, randomly pick a new target to look from. And of course switch speed, so if I wanted to do that, so <laughs> constant speed. Yeah, so constant speed makes the, measures the distance between the, these two targets and uh, sets it so you move at the point when you start switching. Uh, because you can't determine how far those two t transforms will move to while it's running. It'll make it so that it moves at 0.1 units per second. So if I set it to 1, uh, it's going to take a little while. Okay, let's just, go to, let's, let's move on. Uh, so that, that allows you to have like, like, say you're looking over your left shoulder and you want it to look over your right shoulder, you can have it switch like that, which of course you can just get rid of that if you really wanted to too. Like, you don't need it. Uh, 
That's just another feature you have for the target. Now the lock target. So the lock target can actually switch. So in this scene, I have it set up so you can use the arrow keys and it'll switch onto other targets. Uh, you can see how it's changing where it's looking. You can probably even hear me hitting my key. And of course I can, I can even run around it. So I'm always maintaining that lock. It's always looking at that target, which right now is on the right side of my character and is looking through that towards where the lock target is. And of course it has all the other goodies, screen shake, view collision, if I want to turn on view collision, uh, zooming, so it's, I could snap in and out. If I disable that, I, yeah. Uh, now the difference between this one is you can't scroll in or out. You have this distance right here, which is the distance the camera controller is going to try to maintain. So if you're using, say, the basic camera controller and you switch to this, which has like, if you have it set to five, you're going to get real close in on your character. That's something you're going to have to determine if you, uh, how you want. If you want that to remain consistent with what the basic camera had, like if you have that zooming in, which seems a little odd to me, uh, you're going to have to do that yourself. Uh, with a wrapper, when you go to switch them, you're going to have to change the, uh, the distance that you want it to be to do that. I don't think that's really a use case that people are going to have. I think when you're doing this locking, you're going to want it to remain at a consistent distance away from your character. Uh, and that actually should be everything for the walking camera. All right, now this is the multi-camera scene. The multi-camera is a camera controller that works by controlling two camera controllers. So we have a basic uh, camera controller, which is the same one we saw in that first scene. And we have a locking target camera controller, which is the uh, one we saw in the last scene that locks on the targets. So right now I'm just in the basic camera controller and I'm going to hit shift, which is I have set up. I have just a test script here that calls a switch function on them. Uh, and you see I'm going to lock on. Actually, I'm going to use my arrow keys to switch to this target. Okay. Uh, where's my mouse? Okay. Don't know where my mouse is going. Uh, okay, so now I have my basic. Now, let's say I want to snap lock. Whoosh, locked. Now, uh, the camera control, the character controller, not the camera, is current, is just the Unity Asset Store, like third person cam character controller. So, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, what's it called? It's, uh, movement is based off the camera's forward. So, it might be, a little, it's gonna be a little difficult to control in this scene, but, uh, yeah. What I imagine you'd probably have is, uh, you would, when you're locking onto something, you're probably going to want to lock onto something in front of you. So in your game code, you're probably going to have like a search to check the area in front of the character or the angle around where the character's looking. Then you're going to go, Oh, I want to lock onto this. Uh, then you're going to hit your lock on. It's going to lock on like that. Uh, there we go. And, uh, then when you leave, it's going to go back to normal and that's pretty much how I see that being used. Uh, th this can actually be used, the multi-camera controller uh, can be used for any number of camera controllers. It's just a list and it switches based off an index and it has uh, different features for lurping between them. So if I set this to point one, real quick, if I set this to, if I actually set to constant speed, it's that same thing. It measures the distance between the camera positions and sets it to move at point one units per second. Probably not, not something that I'd use, but it's, it's there in case you want to have like a consistent movement speed. The way this camera controller works is each of those camera controllers actually has its own position and rotation that it wants the camera to be at. This creates like a, an in between. <sighs> it's like freaking out. Uh, I've never used that like that. Uh, in my, Oh my god, this is going so slow. Okay, don't use point one in constant speed. Uh, the, uh, oh man, what was I just saying? So, yeah, yeah. So you have your switching thing. So one thing you can do is you can have hold position cameras and then you could like, uh, have the basic camera as well. In fact, you know, what? I'm going to show you right now how easy it is to add that. Uh, 
So I'm going to go into my utilities, cameras, just going to make a new object, holding, and I'll put a whole position. I just drag that onto my desktop. Okay, I'm going to put it here. Uh, third person, do that, lock that, put the, where's this? This. Put this as my target. Put this camera as my camera. I'll set that to default. Uh, we're gonna need a position to look from. Let's have. Sorry, let's let's use this. Let's turn bye bye mesh filter. And voila. Okay. And then we go here. Stick this in here. Boom. Okay. So now what you can do is let's set this to two. And I think if I press shift, <laughs> yep, it'll walk, do the lock on, it'll go to the holding. Yeah, so pretty easy to work with. There's some little there might be some little caveats, but pretty much anything that you might, any small issues, you should be able to wrap the uh, pre-existing code that I have pretty easily. Uh, everything is very exposed. Things can all be changed at runtime. Uh, so there shouldn't be too much to worry about that. Anything that can't be changed at runtime, it's all hidden away. Uh, everything is heavily commented. Uh, you'll, pro you'll probably find like, 30 to 40 percent of the lines are just going to be comments. Uh, all of these features are, uh, so let's stop this. This should all be, uh, what's going on? Okay, hold on. Yeah, so these are all commented. Do I not have this commented? Yeah, no, I have it commented. Okay, yeah, so all these are commented as well. Uh, so if you need to see different things about them, uh, that's all right there for you. And so that's the multi-camera controller. So to reiterate, the only thing you're going to need to use this entire, uh, any of these assets is this one folder here, advanced utilities, the cameras, the components. Uh, that's it. Uh, oh, lerp transformers. Anywhere there's lerping being done, I have this uh, wrapper for it. So if you wanted to create like a smoothing effect, you could set on that component the lerp transformer that's being used, which right now is set to just do nothing, which is literally takes a T, returns a T, uh, smooth in and out, runs it through this equation, which creates a nice, kind of a nice smoothing effect. It's faster towards the middle and slower towards the ends. Uh, and that's everything in this package. That's what you get. Thanks for watching.